All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, friends, acquaintances, associates, friends, foes, and enemies alike over here on YouTube. Pastor Dow here. Well, I wanted to come on here this morning and, and speak about a bizarre behavior, something that I, I spoke about 20-something years ago. And I remember when I was on International Shortwave Radio, I remember when I was on multiple AM, FM radio stations and stuff, and I was broadcasting uh, in the early 2000s. And I remember speaking about these scenarios. I remember talking about uh, things like this. And, of course, you know, I would have people, you know, just take me on the chin for everything. It seems like every single time that I try my best to give people warning about something, somebody always has some type of nonsensical rebuttal to come with. And, um, I, you know, I'm a type of person that the last thing I want to do is to get up here and just simply just talk about, and, and just all I talk about all the time is something negative. I want to be positive just like everybody else, but when you see the writing on the wall, look, listen, we have to have a heightened sense of awareness about us in everything we do in this environment in this day, time, and hour that we're living in. I've sat here and watched myself go from black beard to salt and pepper, now to almost the majority of gray beard. And I spend a lot of this time making videos, warning you, warning your families, and not only that, teaching you and showing you and, 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 and telling you what to do, how to do it. And I can go on and on and on. Well, what is this about? Well, it finally has come to pass. I said some time ago that the people who are doing a lot of looting and robbing, be it California, Illinois, New York, you know, some of these uh, democratic communist states. I said this a long, long time ago that there was going to be looting and robbing and stuff and pillaging. Of course, we're seeing it now. But this is taking it to a whole nother level right here. You know what that whole nother level is? Is this. Criminals, people who want to have a make my day moment or, or those who want to actually think that you live in order to advance their life. And you remember what I often said, that people have nothing to lose, they lose it. Now, it's systemic all the way across the country from one place to another. And it's being reported in local news stations and stuff, but it's not hit mainstream news media. But it is happening everywhere. You know what people are doing now? Because of the supply chain issues and because people just do not have um, the zeal, the drive, and the self-determination uh, to make the necessary sacrifices in order to advance themselves and the people who they say that they love. There are people now that are watching you. When you go to the grocery store, they're watching you and they're following you to see what you buy. They're on the side watching you as you check out. And they're watching you wheel your cart to your vehicle. And in some cases, they jack your groceries right there in the parking lot and take off and run. And they notice that they're not running individually, they're running in groups right here. In other words, they snatch the bag, um, throw it in another car that's getting ready to drive by, and then they take off and run, and the person has just got finished getting jacked, they don't know what to do. Uh, at that you know particular time, you should care less about the groceries. You should be apt to get out of there in safety with your life and count it as a win. And in some cases, they're watching people as they load their groceries. They're following them to their homes. Now they are away from cameras. Now they're away from the general populations. And they're waiting for them to pull up in their driveway. And they kind of hide down the street a little bit. And as you begin to open up your trunk and you begin to take one bag in, especially if you got eight or ten bags, they are driving up. Because, you know, most people, they're not aware of their surroundings. They, they leave their trunk or either their uh, door uh, open. 
and they jump out, they grab the bags, throw them in their vehicle and head on down the street and you come back out and you ain't got nothing in there. You don't even know what's happened. And again, I teach our sisters all the time and very rarely. I mean, our sisters go shopping, right? Um, but they usually go shopping two or three at once and, and each one of them have a job. Like, I'll give you an example. Listen. I think the one thing that I harp on more than anything is being aware of your surroundings and do not take life for granted. You don't get to pick the day, the time, or the hour when evil comes your way. And to try to keep people dialed in, to keep them turned on, is, I mean, it's, it's becoming an extremely hard task for that to happen today. Because for whatever reason, I don't know what it is, but people like this utopia. And I don't know if they believe in the good sense and the morality of man and the benevolence of man. That man is always going to end up doing right and you're not in a hostile environment and, and you feel like you're safe or something like that. Listen, the only place you're safe is at your own homestead, your own community. And even at that, you still probably have somebody looking to have a make my day moment. You don't never know. You don't ever know. That's the reason why that you've got to learn how to be sober minded. You've got to keep yourself aware. Keep yourself on the cutting edge. The cutting edge of sobriety. When you get out of a vehicle and you have to go grocery shopping. First thing you should do. Number one. Exit the vehicle. Look at your surroundings. Take a scan of the area. See what the hell's going on. As you begin to walk to the door of the store. If you notice that someone is coming up behind you, do something, anything. Stop or check your pocket or something like this. But whatever you do out of your peripheral vision, make sure that you can see what's going on if you feel that eerie feeling or you feel like someone's coming up on you too fast. And, and, and do not let too many people come up on your six. Too many times, if you're in the aisle and you feel like someone's coming up on your six and, and you're looking at groceries, turn and, and then look at the items in front of you, but you still have your peripheral vision where you can see. Don't get so caught up into everything else. See, that's the reason why I say if you've got one person is watching and then the other person is doing the grocery shopping and stuff and you can still be shopping, but you know, you have to be wise in how you do things. I give my shies, I give, you know, I give them all scenarios, all the women in the ministry. I give them scenarios like, okay, if we're inside of a grocery store and I'm with you, all right, and you hear, you're in the back of the store and you hear shots fired, what's your plan of action? See, first of all, when you walk into the grocery store, the first thing you should do is you should be looking at the exits. I don't care if they say employees no uh the, no employ no people who are not employed past this area don't i don't care if it says they're not you're not looking at it for that purpose and reason you're looking at it for an escape plan you know escape and evasion because if you hear gunshots and especially you are a woman you, the last thing you want to do is get caught up in a gunfight what you want to do is get a win especially if you got children with you want to get out of that area of chaos and if you have to run through the back storage room and then outside the back door and then go straight to the wood line and then turn around, get behind a tree and kneel down with you and your child or just you yourself, do that until the smoke is cleared and kindly walk back around. And if you see all these cops and everything else and stuff, at least you got it with your life. Get to your vehicle and get out of the area. Listen, you've got to get a control of your emotions today, especially men. If I hear myself purpose, pur purpose, me. If I'm in a grocery store, I'm in the middle of a grocery store, and I hear a bunch of gunshots, be it the front or the rear, my first plan of action is, is not to set up there and play hero. My first plan of action is to look for an uh, area of safety I can get to. I'm not there to defend the world. I'm, here, I'm there to defend me. I'm there to defend if I have someone, loved ones, friends around me, I'm there to defend them. I'm there to get them to safety. Let the whole world kill itself if they got to, but I ain't, I'm not there to play hero. If they just so happen to be in my path and line of fire. Are you following me? Now, at that particular time, I've got 
within a fraction of a second, choices and decisions that I need to make. That's where training comes in. You see, everybody just assume that you carrying a firearm, you're proficient. Just because you carry a firearm and you 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 shoot at paper targets that don't shoot back, you you um shooting at steel targets, and, and you thinking you're gonna have sit up and have all day long to sit up there and and to get a hit on target and stuff. It don't happen like that in a real real world scenario. Not at all. You got adrenaline. You got everything that comes into play. Um, you many of you you go shoot. You never put yourself in a stressful environment. I mean, a good stressful environment is if you're going to go out and train and stuff, uh, have some live fire going off around you and stuff. And uh, when uh, at the time that you didn't think it was going to happen and stuff, and, and and then see how you function under stress. But if I just happen to see them in my way or in my path or something like that, and I see them have a a, a firearm, now they become the threat to me and my loved ones, and it's my job to eliminate the threat. Then you got a whole nother can of worms after that. Because now you've got to give a report. Now you got to set up and probably be handcuffed and questions and everything else. Even though somebody else committed the crime, now you're probably going to be the one in question. That's why I say the first order of business, get out of the area. You get out on the road, especially during these wicked traditional Christian holidays. These satanic holidays. You know, people are in a hurry. The road rage is everywhere. Don't get in no road rage with nobody. If somebody is in a hurry, they got to get past, kindly just softly break and let them on by. And guess what? You've got to win. See, a win is, is whenever you don't have to engage into a firefight or fight where you possibly could lose your life or you take someone's life. That's a win. You're not a coward if you're trying to avoid and you're trying to evade conflict. Get that in your head. You're trying to get home. Because I promise you, man, being in the faith, you got some DA always trying to make a name for themselves. And, and I don't care what criminals do today. We live in a world where it seems like the criminals and everybody that is on the side of the man of sin, they get by. And the righteous always end up getting judged. Listen, put a defibrillator on your mind. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, he always walking about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Do not, at any given time, when you leave the confines of your home, do not ever go out there and not be dialed up, dialed in. Always have a heightened sense of awareness of your surroundings. Stay dialed in and get back home in one piece because it's getting a hell of a lot more hostile out here. Some people just don't sit. Hey, they just don't have nothing to lose. School shootings, <coughs> park shootings. Like I told you, now people are taking vehicles and running over people. And you don't see them trying to ban vehicles, do you? I mean... We live in hostile environment. Get it through your thick heads. Even going to the grocery store is becoming extremely, extremely hostile. And not only that, if you're driving down the road, pay attention to see if someone seems like that they're following you. They're usually a couple of cars back and stuff. They make all the turns you make and stuff like that. And you feel like you're being followed. You don't want to give up where you live at or nothing like that. Then then kind of turn into a gas station or something like that. And point your vehicle out towards the exit. Because you never know what could happen at a gas station. Listen, all of these are plans for life. You should, wherever you go, your husband, head of your home, community head, Home fellowship, you should always be in some type of form of training. Some type of form of training to keep people, because you know, we're human beings. We have this uh, uncanny ability to let things slip. And then we rock ourselves back to sleep. We fold our arms and our hands. And we say, nothing's going to happen to me like that. Well, I don't live like that. I don't live like that at all. Um, I remember I had somebody said. <laughs> They say, boy, you sure do got a lot of guns. What you afraid of? Nothing. Not why I got all these guns. <laughs> you deserve the truth and the true straight way. Wake up.